Buffalo Bill Jr. Buffalo Bill Jr. Buffalo Bill Jr. With his little sister, Calamity. Buffalo Bill Jr. brings you exciting action. Thrills and fun Whoa. with Judge Ben Barron Square, Wiley. Buffalo Bill. Americans were so eager for the land and new opportunities when we settled the West that we were pretty rough in our ways. It took a real man to stand the pressure. And a man was a tenderfoot until he proved himself. Well, sir, tenderfeet come from all over the world. But the one that left the biggest impression with me was the Laird of Kew Grayley, the head of his clan in Scotland. But a kind of a freak, we thought, on the American range. But we learned about the Laird, and he learned, too, how to handle himself and the trouble he ran into. All of which started in my old friend, Lawyer Jenkins' office, over at Goldville, before the Laird got there. Reach. Roof, lock that door, and you get upstairs and look around for the well. Get her. If anybody heard the shots, they'd have been here by now. What's the matter now? My dolly's seasick. Seasick? How can she get seasick riding horseback? Well, anyway, she's losing her inside. I better take care of her. You better see a doctor. I'll meet you, Mr. Jenkins. Office. Be in here somewhere. Maybe he's got it in his pocket. Mr. Jenkins, don't go for those guns. Get over next to that door. All right, now throw your guns down on the floor.
what's that? Indians, I bet. Maybe they're on the war path. Whatever it is, it's not Indian. Now, what do you make of that? That's my cousin from Scotland. He's the one the old man will to mind you. Well, he don't know it yet, and he's never going to find out. Howdy, mister. Good day. What's that awful noise? Noise? I didn't hear any noise. It's coming from that thing. That thing, my laddie buck, is a phonograph. And the noise, my wee lassie, is the glorious music of the healing pipe. We've heard a phonograph, but we've never seen one. And we've never heard of those whatchamacallit pipes. They hurt my ears. All right, Pancho, you can stop the insurance. Excuse me, sir. But do you know you lost one of your eyeglasses? <laughs> I see, though. You don't ken my monocle, you don't ken the pipe, and you probably don't even ken Kill Grayley. Kill Grayley? Allow me to introduce myself. I am the laird of Kill Grayley from Scotland. Scotland? Wow. That's far away. Do you ken my uncle? He has an estate here about Ian McDaisy. Well, I hate to be the one to tell you, but Mr. McDaisy died a week ago. Oh, to the pity, for we never met. I was looking forward to meeting my fellow clansmen. Well, he has another nephew. His name is Alex. He must be your cousin. And he lives at Mr. McDaisy's house. But it's not an estate. It's an old run-down shack. And there used to be a gold mine. But it's no good anymore. Clamity, hush. The estate is of no importance. But as head of the clan, I'd like to call on the fellow clansmen, if you can tell me where to find it. Well, that's real easy. You just follow the range road north. First house you come to. You're back, senor. He is ready. Good man. And let me hear the pipe while I bathe. You mean tell me you're going to get a bath right out here? Why not? It's the hour I bathe every day. I know it is easy. You sure? It's just one thing, mister, if you don't mind telling us. Why were you throwing that log around? Oh, to the ancient Scottish foot. It's called touching the cable. Boy, you sure tossed it. <laughs> I'm a poor hundred of myself compared to the raw lads of him and the healing. Well, so long, Laird. And if you ever in Wileyville, stop in at the store and see us. That's where we live. When he shows up at the ranch, we'll run him out of the country. Just can't figure who'd want to kill Tom Jenkins. Well, it looked like they were trying to steal something. I hope that funny man with the pipes comes to visit us. From what you told me, this Laird of Kilcraley is a representative of an old and honorable family. I wish I could say the same for his American relative. You know, the more you listen to those pipes, the better you get to like them. Well, certainly. They're the expression of the spirit of a great race of men. Oh, by the way, I suppose you didn't get the book I sent you over to borrow off of Fire Jenkins. No, I forgot. But anyway, Judge, you don't need it. You make up your own laws as you go along. Calamity, did you hear that? Yes. Oh, goody, is Bill going to get sentenced for something? Well, then what'd I do? Get before that bitch. Court is now in session. Take off that hat. Young man, in impunging the judicial conduct of this court, you have laid yourself wide open for a charge of contempt. What does impunging mean? It means that, well, anyway, you're guilty. And the sentence will be, uh, well, I see now, the dishes have been washed. And uh, the, uh... I know. My dolly has to be filled up. Make Bill do it. Court so orders. Couldn't I just say I'm sorry? The sentence has been pronounced. I get even with you for making me do girls' work. Don't forget, I can scream real good. You said so yourself.
This is a real strike, Alex. That's better than the original vein that played out. Sure, but what good is it going to do us if I don't own it? Let's get up to the ranch and pick up a welcome for my tenderfoot cousin. <laughs> Nobody home, senor. Try the door. If the servants are about you, leave her my card. Servant. Servant. What is servant? Mr. Servant. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> maybe it isn't a man. Yeah, maybe it's an escaped freak from a circus. Mind your <laughs> manners, you ruffian, do I gear the patchings of his eyes. <laughs> hey, now. He's a little rough for a freak, ain't he? Hey, you, what goes on there? Oh, I, I just leave a car for Mr. Servant. It's like a plain case of burglary to me. Nonsense, I'm the layout of Kilgarelli. Come to visit my councilman, Alec McDavid. Well, that's me. And it looks to me like you come for something more than visiting. Now dance out of here, Tenderfoot. <laughs> found it, all right. And now we're showing him the quickest way out of here. Take your rope and start up the team. Well, you can't do that. Can't I? Reach. Bill, look! Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah! Now, spook him up good. But he'll get killed. That's his lookout. What is a deep fire of rage burning inside of me? Well, I can't blame you. Is it a barbarous custom of this country to treat a Scotsman like that? Well, no, sir. There's just something going on. And we'd better get back to the judge and tell him about it. Can you drive? From here to Scotland if I have to. Do you even the score with that renegade of a McDaisy? Good. We better go point. <laughs> It'd be all right if 
Bill didn't think he'd know them. First in Jenkins' office, and then here. He doesn't know that it was us in Jenkins' office. He knows enough to make a report to the judge about us roughing up the tenderfoot, and the judge can really brew up trouble. Well, if you hadn't shot him, we wouldn't have anything to worry about. I had to shoot him. It was either him or me. Bring him in here. Oh, you stayed here to spy on me. No, no, sir, no. I had bad part, and I just fell down. And what did you hear? Mind you don't understand so good English, senor. I don't know who's Jenkins. Look, if he heard what you said about Jenkins, that's enough. That's too much for me. Well, it's my neck as much as it is yours if we turn him loose and he talks good or bad English. We ain't got to turn him loose. Get some dynamite and caps to take down to the mine. Pancho's going to have a little accident. Look, no, senor. I don't say nothing. You bet you don't. It just don't make sense that he'd treat you like that. Unless there's something going on up there he don't want you to know about. I have not the slightest interest in Alec McBeary's concerns. All I ask is to meet him man to man. It couldn't be that Alec is afraid of losing the ranch or the mine, because they both don't amount to anything. Oh, I almost forgot. I just thought of my dolly's dress reminded me. Don't interrupt with prattle. This isn't prattle. When we were at the ranch, I saw a shirt that had ink all over it. Well, now, if that isn't prattle, what is it? All right, Mr. Smarty. Only remember the man in Mr. Jenkins' office that had ink all over him? You saw that shirt up at McDaisy's? Right beside me, hanging out to dry. She could have something there, Judge. There's mighty few shirts with ink stains around, and it might be evidence they killed Jenkins. I consider them capable of any dastardly deed. I'll help you arrest them. Oh, not so fast. Now, we don't have a motive, and just seeing that shirt's mighty slim evidence. Why, whole books have been written on the subject of rules of evidence in law. I don't care about any old rules. I saw the man with ink on his shirt in Mr. Jenkins' office, and then I saw the shirt of the McDaisy. Now, here's an example among the books that Lawyer Jenkins willed me sent over from Goldville today. You can see right there, evidence, circumstantial. Now, you take... Hold on, what's this? Why, it's old McDaisy's will. What? What's that? What does it say? Is it a motive? Now, the constant light on the situation. It's final and conclusive. Blair, you're the heir of McDaisy property. Yes, sir. And, and it's not worthless like you thought. Just before he wrote this, the old man discovered a new outcrop in the mine. And it's richer than the original one. Well, that's it. That's why they killed Jenkins, to get the will. Yeah, but why, why didn't they kill me? Oh, he didn't have to go that far. Of course not. You can see here it says that if you don't stay and take possession, he gets the mine. Or he'd be satisfied just to scare you away. Bill, I'm deputizing you and the Laird to go out and arrest Alec McDaisy for murder. Now get going. You bet. Come on, Laird. I'll have to get my gun out of the wagon. And I'll have a look at that mine. Can I come along? No, you better stay here and look after the store and take care of the Laird's wagon. Nothing here, Bill. Is this Pancho's hat? Oh, my poor man. His heart wasn't all that it should be. I wonder what they did to him. Well, they caught him outside that window and they drug him in here. Then they took him away on horseback. But how do you know, laddie? You weren't here at the time. I can read signs. Signs? Like the Indians. Marks on the ground. And their horses trail lead toward the mine. That's where the judge was going. That's where we'd better go pronto. Blast this tunnel, cover up the vein along with this jasper, just in case somebody gets nosy. Hurry up, setting that dynamite! That dynamite? Well, I couldn't say no loud noise. No, senor. I'll tie him up anyway. I'll watch the main tunnel. Daisy, I call upon you to surrender in the name of the law. Why, sure, Judge, but what do you want me for? For the murder of lawyer Jenkins. Hey, Ruth, come here. This 
old ghost tried to arrest me for the Jenkins killing. What are you going to do with it? He's going to have the same accident as our Mexican friend. Tie him up. Group, you watch the main tunnel. I haven't finished setting the dynamite. I'll take care of that myself. Look, they must have the judge inside. There's another tunnel mouth with better cover for us. Come on. the judge in here, Pancho. Nothing will happen to him if you talk sense. What do you call sense? I want the lawyer to get out of the country. Leave the place to me. No true daisy ever threatened blackmail, nor submitted to it. He dirty renegade. <laughs> music and I haven't sent thought. Here, tell me what I got. Laird. I gotta go see about the judge and Poncho. Oh, I sure am glad you're safe. Well, where have you been all this time? Well, I was... Get me out of here! Hey, my body lad! What's the heat of music that inspired me? You will therefore be incarcerated in a cell in my jail until the United States Marshal comes for you. Take him away, Bill. Ah, shut off that doggone caterwauling, will you? Caterwauling, indeed. The music should move you to repent your ill-spent life. Hey, that's an idea, Judge. Make them listen to it from now till the time they leave. The court so orders. But who'll keep the photograph going? I will be delighted, senor. <laughs> Gracious, Pancho. Buffalo Bill Jr. Now with his horse and with his gun, he's not afraid of anyone. Cause no one's quicker on the draw or quicker to defend the law. Buffalo Bill Jr. Buffalo Bill Jr. He's the son of a son of a gun. Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill Jr. 